I don't know where we are. Rickety looking endeavor. Oh man. Ramen does not happen without everyone's work. Good morning. I am in whatever location is most convenient for filming my talking heads. I started filming this video about two days ago and I'm very, very down to the wire. Today is going to be a bit more chill than the usual updates. Think of this as the calm before the storm that's going to be the next couple weeks of videos. But before we get into that, I want to give a very, very special thank you to Linda Miller, Sheila Trena, Justin McCullough, Janet Jones, Patricia Yadden, Maureen Watchmaker, Sydney Streeter, Kay Phillips, Sue Davis, Ian McGlinchey, James Leon, Amy McBain, Rodney Kripe, Sally Berry, M. Eileen Lauder, Verona Teal, Randy Wallen, Kyle Morsell, Julie Maddox, Todd Farley, Matt Nail, Troy Cook, Pam Eisenreich, Karen Prentice, Melissa Haskin, Robin Jacques, Ethan Denson, Sharon O'Connell, 1974, Donna Green, Angela DeFell, Amanda Cramery, Laura Black, Thamo Bush, Estate Sales, Ethan Venable, Victoria Freeman, Chris Goodwin, and Luke Smith. If I mispronounce any of your names, I am so, so sorry. I really, really, really cannot begin to thank you guys enough for your donations. You are the ones who are paving the way, literally paving the way, for me to get started on my cabin and make this all possible. So really, thank you so, so much. Very, very soon I will find a way to thank you all in some tangible and narratively satisfying way. So please stay tuned for that. Once again, thank you so, so much. And now on to our video. You know, since I got here, I've been on a pretty singular track, living by the long list of to-dos in order of least to most important. Clear the land, set up PO boxes, get bank accounts, figure out all the paperwork that needs to be done, film content, and figure out all the things that need to be done before winter. But still, after being here for nearly a month, I feel like I haven't done as much as I could have. Sure, some of that can be chalked up to not having a truck to pull stumps, getting barred from the one entrance to the land, but I feel like, in truth, a lot of it is because I didn't take as much initiative as I could have. And that's entirely on me. I've gotten things done, absolutely, but I think I could be much, much further along if I just toiled a bit harder. And I have no excuse for that. Same thing with YouTube. I just, I'm putting things out, but I really, I could be putting out things that are more substantial or better edited or have better sound quality, but just, I haven't. Everything I've been doing, I could be doing better. And that's been on my mind a lot lately. But the gears are finally turning around here. Gravel's getting put in next week. In a matter of days, I will have tangible progress on the property to show you all. But I've spent so much time lately scrambling to get things done, frantically trying to figure out how to be an adult and live on my own. I've been neglecting one of the main reasons that I wanted to come back up here and make my home here at all. I wanted to live on the cusp of true wilderness, to live in a place where I could explore and enjoy the natural world as much as I possibly could. July is gonna be a month of labor, but before it begins, I decided to go out into the mountains with two of my best friends to embark on the summer's first true wilderness campaign. Content, content, content. Oh We're making it out of this one, boys. We, this is like mile three of this. Oh, oh. People, people, look, people, look. Let's get some thoughts from the boys before starting. Stop that, stop that. You can do it when I'm not doing it and I can do it when you're not doing it. It's a long drive. It was. And I don't know where we are. I don't like how close we parked to the river either. My parking job Daniel. I parked fine. Okay, okay. After finding our somewhat precarious parking spot, me falling into some two feet of glacier water, we were off on our trail. Our destination was some six or seven miles ahead of us, out by a glacial flow between an arm and the mountain range on either side. It's not the most isolated spot in the world. We saw some five or six people leaving the trail as we went further in. But once they were behind us, we didn't see anyone else for the rest of the trip. We seemed to have that entire corner of the world to ourselves. Rickety looking endeavor. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is, oh man. I got too much stuff for this. Oh my goodness. Woo! Do not like, do not like the bridge. Oh, goodness. Oh my goodness. Thrill taking. That's awful. I hate that so much. Oh, poor Daniel. He hasn't even started. 
Harness the power within, Daniel. Harness the power within. As awful as the ordeal of the bridge was, it was kind of exhilarating in a way. I think that the act of putting your faith in something so obviously rickety and possibly dangerous primes you for whatever might be ahead. But once we got beyond that, we took a quick break, and the further we went, the views only improved. Hello. I told you this was the way. about an hour and 15 minutes and uh, I think we cross that river over there and then we'll make it to a hill and go up. What is that? What are you doing? <laughs> Let's go boys. Let's go. We stopped a while longer at whatever that thing was. We'd arrived around six, and by then we'd been hiking over every kind of terrain for nearly two and a half hours. I scouted ahead for a bit, and after a brief last hike by the river, we found our spot and started setting up camp for the night. Now, if you look closely, you'll notice that the green bag I was wearing throughout the trip seems oddly rectangular. That was because its sole purpose was to carry my ancient Coleman stove. I'd been wanting to put it to good use for a while, but at the end of the day, when we were tired and ready for food, it let us down. So, we need more, we take some more extreme measures. Oh, it's so, so wet. Ramen does not happen without everyone's work. There is no wood anywhere around here. We are driven solely by the hope that we might have ramen tonight. It is getting warmer, but this is all we have to burn with. So, it's gonna be a long road. Now, now do not use a machete. That is correct. Goodbye, $20 Amazon machete. And I will pour you the very first one this time. It is actually boiling. No, it's it leaking. Is. It is leaking. Like that took us like 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe more, maybe more than 40 minutes to work on just this ramen. After we had our little celebration and devoured our victory ramen, we tried our best to get some sleep. We decided to put all of our cargo in the second tent and sardine the three of us into tent number one. But somehow I forgot to bring, of all things, a sleeping bag. And as Daniel only had a couple wool blankets, the bedding material between the three of us was stretched pretty thin. That, plus the lack of any sleeping mat and the considerable chill from the wind, made it for a pretty long and miserable night. Around five or six, we collectively got up and decided that it was time to get our stuff back together and head back to the car. What do y'all think? I want to die. Yeah, that night sucked. That was that was awful. It's a it's a it's a morning now. Uh, I don't think it's quite that cold, but it's close to it. We are getting our stuff back together and heading out of this nightmare. That was the worst night of sleep that has ever been. No, no, no. We'll do it on the next trip. I promise. <laughs> Oh, sir. I, I, breakfast? There's, there will be no breakfast today. You know there's nothing to start a fire with. I'm sorry. In about a pretty painful irony, we discovered that we'd taken just about every difficult trail and unnecessary detour that the landscape was offering. The hike back to the car took us maybe half the time and effort of the day previous. As quickly as we'd set out on this trip, it came to its quiet, exhausted end. We have at last returned. How does it feel to be home? Not home. It's just a vehicle. Well, it's close. It's the car. Close to the car. Hello, sir. Unlock the car and let's go get breakfast. We made it out of the mountains. We have. I wonder how many of the bugs are there. We're making it out of the mountains with this one, boys. Now, this is where we get the flat tire. Yes, that is very, very, very true. I wish we'd been able to go further, or stay out longer, have better bedding, or had the stuff to actually make us a decent meal. Even with an overnight camping trip, there's so much that I could have done better. But thinking about it more, I realize there's a counter to that. I've only been on my own for 40 days now. 
I don't need to know how to do everything perfectly. I don't need to know how to maximize the efficiency of every little thing. I think there's a merit in just the fact that I'm out here doing it, that I'm actually trying things, and that I'm experimenting, figuring out how things work, how I'm gonna start the next build, how I'm gonna prepare for the next trip. I'm looking forward to July. It's gonna be the month of being better. But even though I didn't do as much in June, I'm gonna try and remember it as the month of good enough, of doing those first attempts and doing my absolute best to figure out how it works. Because good enough is infinitely more valuable to me than not trying at all. It's not about getting it right. It's about making an attempt, even if it's mediocre. Go out and actually try it. That already puts you ahead of most people. And I'm glad to have done that. And that's gonna be all for today. Thank you so much for watching my little trip. I'm glad to have done it. This video was a lot of fun to make and I really, really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you all so much for being here. I'm Mick and until next time, Toil for your food. I'll see y'all later. Have a good day.